So basically we need to download an IDE which allows us to compile and link in a visual way our programs. And visual Studio is one for Windows and CodeBlocks is another open source and multi-platform type of software that will allow us to compile and link in a visual fashion as well. Bloodshed Dev C++ is also a good uh, compiler and GUI that allows us to actually compile, but it's uh, out of date. So we will use, I would recommend Visual Studio. In any case, it allows us to compile in Windows and it's a complete studio. You can use the Express Edition. I have the standard one. And as you can see, I'll tap back to it and you can see that it's a, a Visual Studio standard version, but you can use the Express one, no problems there. So we press and hold the Control Shift and then N to open the new project type of a dialog. And we need to click on the Win32 console application because this one is the one that we will be using to actually see the output more easily without any complications. And the name, you can use any name, but in this case I use test a lot. I use camel case, uh, that's something that we will be using uh, quite a lot also in uh, our programming inside our variables. Solution name is, well, basically a project inside a project. That means that the solutions contains many projects that allows us to uh, well, we have many projects associated with each other. So now that we have set all of this, we click on OK. That will allow us to continue and uh, click on application settings, which allows us to actually set all of uh, the other options that we need to set because these are very important. OK, uh, the additional options are empty project because we don't want Visual Studio to confuse us because we are beginners. We need to click on empty project and uh, finish so that we can actually write and understand what we are doing from the beginning. Here at the left side, there's the Solution Explorer, and uh, Testalot has add a new item. Of course, we have to add a new item so that we can actually start adding new, uh, new files. And in this case, uh, you can see that there are a lot of types of files. We'll name it uh, whatever you want. Uh, let's start, for example. And um, then you see a, a bunch of file types on the upper part. This is the location. The location is any part on, on the hard disk that you want your project to reside. And of course, a bunch of file names up here. We need to choose, obviously, the C++ file that will contain our... It's, it's a simple text file and it will contain all our code. So we choose that and, as you can see, click on Add to add that file on our project. We go back to the Solution Explorer. We will see that there are a bunch of, uh, well, actually only the source file has been added with the let's start .cpp. That allows us to open a new project and include the IO stream, which is actually standard input. That a standard input type of library that allows us to include uh, the declarations uh, in the main is the main function, which allows to execute uh, function uh, uh, functions and uh, function calls and variable definitions and so on that uh, is done at the start of the program. Printf is actually from the C standard, but it allows us to output to the command prompt. And as you can see, um, we have to add include another include directive so that we can actually uh, include the C standard CSTDIO, which allows us to uh, use inputting and outputting functions from the C standard, not the C++. C++ actually uses IO stream. But in this case, we're using C++ and it has the subset of S. TDIO and we have to append the C uh, beforehand on the suffix. So C out is the one that uses IO stream and printf is the one that uses CSTDIO. Uh, we need to call the function printf and as you can see it ends with a semicolon and uh, we use double quotes. We uh, declare a variable called uh, var and it's a type integer and assign it a value of 7 and it with a semicolon. Int basically stands for integer and is uh, highlighted in blue for Visual Studio to indicate that it's actually a type, a token that is accepted by uh, C++ var is actually the label and the assignment operator is the equal sign in mathematics, but it, here it means assignment. And 7 is actually the immediate value that will be assigned to this uh, variable. Uh, the semicolon is actually ending this statement. And then we see the printf uh, function call, but it's not complete. We want to print the var function inside the printf function. 
so for that we will actually need a a specifier that will allow us to specify printf. Actually, that variable will be the one printed, and not not only the the string which is specified by those double quotes over there. And the cout function will also output the value seven. And as you can see, we are typing print and percent sign d, which is a formatting specifier. And then the other one is the seven, which is uh, of course another argument. Uh, cout is passed with var and we return zero to the uh, operating system. As you can see, this is the ending of the body, the, the ending uh, curly bracket. And this indicates the body of the, of the main function that uh, is uh, initially executed. It's very, very useful for code block indication. And uh, well, that's basically all. Now we need to press uh, F5 to actually build the whole project and be able to visualize if everything went okay. Would you like to build it? And yes, of course, because if you, if you haven't uh, done it before, it will have to build it. And of course, there are errors, syntax errors, but uh, let's see why it actually happens. There were build errors, and would you like to continue and run the latest? Well, there is no successful build, so we are constrained with clicking on no. Of course, uh, there's no, uh, no build to, to continue with. So include is uh, mispronounced, and as you can see, it's an L that I mistyped there. Uh, so that uh, now it, because Visual Studio recognizes it as a preprocessor directive. Now it turns blue. Uh, as you can see, pressing F5 once again, clicking on yes, allows us to visualize another error. Click on no and see that uh, Cout is an undeclared identifier, which means that we must depend the namespace of that. Of that global object. And in this way we specify um, that we are using the IOStream's standard STD namespace and the colon colon is actually the scope operator. Press F5 once again and we can see that we click on yes to build it, but this time it doesn't throw any error but it does close immediately. So what we need to do is actually add a line so that we can, it's not standard, but we can specify to the command line that it's actually uh, pause, to pause when this actually executes. So it, it will pause and actually show us what it is that uh, it's happening inside. So it prints 7 and then 7, and it's formatted in a wrongful way. It looks like 77, but in reality it's print 7 and then see out prints 7. So as you can see, we need to format it in a more acceptable way. We press the backslash and then the end, which is basically a escape sequence to allow a new line, in this case, to occur, which means, uh, and then endl is an object that indicates a new line as well, but for see out, which is uh, the other print, the other functionality from C++ that allows uh, printing to a command line. Uh, we can see that I mispronounced endl. Uh, actually, I didn't mispronounce it. I didn't use the suffix of the std and then the colon colon scope operator. So now that we fixed it, it actually prints 7 and then new line, then 7, new line. And then the pause command is executed. As you can see, print 7 and then 7 are done by two different functions. One is printf and the other one is cout. Now to understand this is pretty simple. We just actually visualize that uh, first printf is called and the string print percent sign %d is the format specifier that allows to take the 7 and the other one is cout which only takes var as an argument because it's a operator overloading that we will look at later. So that 7 is the one, the second one printed. And now we have finished this uh, exercise, but for later tutorials we will understand in more details all of this. Thanks for listening.